Among other obstacles faced in the construction process, water can be one of the most challenging and costly barriers during construction. With 71% of the Earth's surface covered in water and new construction beginning every day, coffer dams are proving to be just as significant today as they were before the birth of Christ. By definition, a coffer dam is a work area constructed and dewatered to temporarily provide dry land for construction of various types of structures. In this video, we're going to cover the different uses for coffer dams, the different types, the materials involved, the construction process, removal, and more. Before we begin, we want to thank our sponsor and good friends at Jet Filter Systems. If you want to prevent retaining and seawall failure, well, how about saving money on repairs? Check out JetFilterSystem.com to learn more about their super efficient weep hold filters. Now back to the video. Coffer Dam Uses There are various construction scenarios where a coffer dam is necessary. Building a structure in a riverbed, seashore, or a lake. Building in an area of coarse grain soil where deep excavations are required. Building below the groundwater table. Building when trenches would likely collapse, typically during deep excavations. And to protect adjoining buildings or nearby structures. Coffer Dam Requirements There are several basic requirements of any coffer dam. It must be watertight. A coffer dam must remain standing against the pressure of existing or added water, such as a flood. Existing water includes water at, above, or below the groundwater table. Coffer dam materials. Coffer dams can be made from several different materials, such as earth, rocks, timber, steel, and concrete. If possible, the selected material should be relatively easy to dismantle and recycle to reduce construction costs. Types of coffer dams. There are various types of coffer dams, including earthen coffer dams. Earthen coffer dams are the simplest to construct, but have somewhat limited use. An embankment made of earth is used to enclose the work area. Earthen coffer dams are best for areas with a low depth of water flowing at a low velocity. Typically, the top of the embankment is built approximately one meter above the water. Boulders may be used on the side slopes of the bank on the water side to prevent erosion. Rock-filled coffer dams. Similar to earthen coffer dams, rock-filled coffer dams have a rubble or stone embankment to surround the work area. A rock-filled coffer dam is still used in lower depth water, perhaps 2 meters to 3 meters. Braced coffer dams. Braced coffer dams consist of a single wall of sheet pile and is supported by struts. This prevents the wall from collapsing inward. Braced coffer dams are typically used for smaller work areas. You may see this type of coffer dam used in the repair of bridge piers and abutments. Timber crib coffer dams. Timber crib coffer dams are made of a frame comprised of wooden beams. Horizontal and cross beams are laid in an alternate course. Timber crib coffer dams are left open at the bottom and filled in with either earth, gravel, or rock. Concrete coffer dams. Concrete coffer dams are used when pile driving is problematic. This includes limited headroom the need to reduce or eliminate vibrations, or where boulders embedded in the ground would split steel sheet piles. Concrete coffer dams are expensive, but the overall cost is reduced by making them part of the permanent structure. This type of coffer dam is typically used for smaller areas and often built of precast reinforced cement concrete, or RCC, piles. Single wall coffer dams. Single wall coffer dams are used for small areas with a depth of water typically between four and a half to six meters. Guide piles made of timber are driven deep into the riverbed, below the firm ground beneath it. The velocity of the water flow determines the center to center spacing of the guide piles. Whales, 
also known as longitudinal runners, are bolted to the guide piles. Steel or wooden sheet piles are driven along the whales and then bolted to them. The sheets on both faces are braced using struts. Half-filled bags of sand are used to stabilize the single-wall cofferdam. Double-wall cofferdams. A double-wall cofferdam consists of two straight parallel walls made of sheet piling that are tied together. The space between the two walls is then filled with soil. Double-wall cofferdams are used in water with a depth up to 12 meters. Cellular cofferdams. For large excavations, the use of cross-excavation bracing may not be feasible. Cellular cofferdams consist of interlocking steel plates designed to resist lateral forces without the need for bracing. There are two types of cellular cofferdams, diaphragm and circular. Diaphragm cellular cofferdams have circular arcs at the sides that are attached to straight diaphragm walls. Circular cellular cofferdams have large circular cells that are connected using circular cells that are a bit smaller. The cells of cellular cofferdams are filled, usually with earth or concrete. A waterproof membrane covers the cells and the whole cofferdam is placed and secured. Now before we continue, be sure to crush the like button and subscribe to receive more marine construction guides. We appreciate your support. Cofferdam Construction Process Most cofferdams are constructed using the following 12 general steps. Number 1. Pre-dredge and level the area for the cofferdam. Number 2. Drive temporary support piles. Number 3. Temporarily install a bracing frame on the support piles. Number 4. Install steel sheet piles. Number 5. Drive sheet piles to grade. Number six, block between bracing frame and sheets. Number seven, tie sheet piles at the top. Number eight, excavate, leaving the water inside the cofferdam. Number nine, install internal bracing as the water is removed progressively from the cofferdam. Number 10, drive piles as required. Number 11, install rock fill. And number 12, place trimmy concrete seal. Cofferdam pressures. An engineer determines the best type of cofferdam to use. It needs to be of a sufficient size to meet the project requirements in the most economical way possible. The engineer uses standard calculations based on known and anticipated forces, including hydrostatic pressure, soil loads, water currents, waves, ice, as well as seismic and accidental loads. Emergency response. With workers and equipment inside of what is essentially a deep, dry well, you need to have an emergency response plan in place. There are several potential risks when working inside a cofferdam. Obviously, a flood event causes the cofferdam to fill up with water, but rock fissures and shifting soil conditions, even vessel traffic, can create unsafe conditions within the cofferdam. Any emergency response plan should include dewatering backups that are regularly inspected. Cofferdam removal. The cofferdam is meant to be a temporary structure, but you can't just pull it out, chuck it out, and be done with it. Removal of the cofferdam must be planned in advance. A critical consideration is the impact of cofferdam removal on the structure that was built. In some cases, the sheet piles are sheared off and the bottoms are left in place. This is to avoid damaging foundation soils that could in turn damage the new structure. Conclusion. Cofferdam construction is a tried and true technique that has allowed us to build bridges to connect communities within and between countries. Cofferdams are used to build dams to power our lives and allow commerce between international ports. The cofferdam is an old technology with a recorded history going all the way back to 539 BC. Some of the materials from that time are still being used, earth, rock, and wood. The cofferdam continues to evolve 
with the use of different materials and construction methods. Once again, we want to thank our sponsor, Jet Filter System. Check them out at jetfiltersystem.com or call 800-475-2029 to save money and prevent retaining and seawall fade. Well, that's all we have for now. And be sure and subscribe so you'll be notified whenever we release a new video guide.